Hello there, back with another celebrity makeup bag video covering one of the most requested faces. In this series, I take a star whose beauty style I admire and research their routine to see if we have any products in common. Excited to have lots of matches to share with you here after several years of hoping to feature her. Lily Collins is a British American actress and an absolute beauty. She has quite a timeless look and elegance that harks back to Audrey Hepburn with those big eyes, defined brows, porcelain skin and dark features but she's also a very modern muse and I love that she doesn't play it safe. She takes beauty risks with bold colour and edgy editorial looks. Lily has been a long time Lancome ambassador so much of the press surrounding her routine focused on those products which I'm sadly not as familiar with so I didn't have enough detail to feature her for a long time. Enter Emily in Paris and lots of press and on-set info emerging for Lily's character Emily Cooper so I suddenly found lots of products from a variety of brands both on screen and in Lily's personal life. Sources are listed below as always. Beginning with one of her most famous features and one of her favourite bits of the beauty world, brows. Lily says it's all about the brows. To brush them up on the set of Emily in Paris, her makeup artist on the show, Aurélie Payan, used Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. She said she kept a spare in her kit to fix Lily's brows all day. This clear formula has a large mascara-like wand, so it really lifts and brushes through. Also appeared in my Olivia Rodrigo makeup bag video. In late 2020, Lily said she personally uses Glossier Boy Brow in clear to keep her brows in shape. A very well-known brow tamer I'm sure many of you might have at home. This is a creamy pomade, so there's a lot more product on the brush than Anastasia, but it doesn't feel heavy or crunchy, just keeps your brows in place comfortably. A couple of powder compacts I spotted on the set of Emily in Paris. In a behind the scenes clip from season two, I noticed Aurélie Payan touching up Lily's makeup with By Terry Hyaluronic Pressed Hydra Powder. It was mentioned in an interview too. This is the pressed version of my favorite loose powder from By Terry. The formula is a perfect non-powder powder, so it's barely there, blurs skin without looking dry, so I can see why it would look seamless on screen. In another behind the scenes snap, I'm pretty sure Aurélie had Charlotte Tilbury's Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in her hand. I recognise the shape of the rose gold compact. This is a celebrity and celebrity makeup artist favourite. It was in my Lana Condor makeup bag video. A fine, silky powder that has a similar natural look. One sells every minute, apparently. When asked if she preferred blush or bronzer, Lily picked blush. Me too. In W Magazine in 2017, Lily mentioned Lancôme's Cushion Blush Subtil. Anyone been here long enough to remember this in my old videos? I discovered it in 2017 too, and it was in my favourites that year. This is Rose Givre. The light, sheer liquid is still nice and juicy inside. Sadly not around anymore, so leave your favourite cushion blushes in the comments. Emily in Paris makeup artist Aurélie said she's a fan of cream blush formulas to keep the skin looking fresh. You know how much I love them too. She mentioned Chanel's Bomme Essentiel in Printanier, so maybe she's used it on Lily. I have the shade Rosé, which is similar, but they're always very subtle. More about a dewy glow, like a super sheer blush highlight hybrid. Which mascara tubes does Lily use to lift those long lashes? She's mentioned Lancôme Monsieur Big many times, wearing it to the Golden Globes last year and even calling it one of her five favourite things. She says she's always been a mascara girl and this formula is her favourite to add lots of volume and make her eyes come alive. I've been meaning to repurchase this in full size actually. Zendaya has worn it too. Aurélie Payant said she used Dior Pump and Volume Mascara on the Emily in Paris set to open up Emily slash Lily's eyes. This is a formula I got into a few years ago after Harry Makes It Up applied it on me. It adds nice length, definition and volume and I think I prefer it to Monsieur Big. It just has a bit more oomph without looking clumpy or too heavy. Lots of lipstick details from the show, so let's split it up into Everyday Emily and Evening Emily. According to Aurélie Payan, Emily's signature rosy nude lip combination is created using Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk first. This often appears in my research. It was even used on Phoebe Dinever as Daphne Bridgerton in that hit Netflix series. Lovely to create natural, dusty rose lips. Then Max Matte Lipstick Velvet Teddy was added on top. 
not in my collection, but a suggested dupe for that medium, warm, rosy brown is Lisa Eldridge True Velvet in Velvet Fawn. It is a bit softer and lighter, more of a 90s peachy nude than a rosy brown, but legendary makeup artist Lisa Eldridge and Lily have worked together many times, so I'm sure she's worn one of her True Velvets at some stage. As she saunters into the Savoir office, the colour on Emily's lips for work is often Pat McGrath Labs Matte Trance in Omi. Broke my no shopping rule for this series here, I had to try this lovely mid-tone rose. Big fan of that colour family, but this is actually a stronger rosy berry on me. The formula is a flatter matte, still comfortable, but I like to lay a lip balm underneath. Flashing back to her first day in Paris, Emily wore MAC matte lipstick in Whirl when she arrived at her apartment. I bought this six or seven years ago, I think when it was on every British YouTuber's lips, but it actually lay forgotten at the bottom of a drawer because it's more of a flat brown on me than a matte dusty rose. Didn't really wear it, but Lily's inspired me to give it a go again. Moving to some of Emily's evening or date night lips in bolder colours, Ogali said Emily's usual lip colour for a date would be Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution in Bond Girl, now known as M.I. Kiss. I think she was wearing this in season one when she ends up on a date at Café de Flore. My big Charlotte Tilbury swatching video will tell you just how much I love this formula, and brownie red Bond Girl is my absolute favourite. For Emily's trip to the ballet in season one, her stunning Audrey Hepburn inspired look apparently featured Sephora's cream lip stain shade 01 Always Red. I've also seen a Lancome colour named somewhere, but Aurélie did mention this product too. Such a striking rich red, very pigmented, but creamy. I'm pretty fussy with liquid lipstick, but this one isn't dry or thick. Aurélie also named the Pat McGrath Labs Matte Trance shade Obsessed in the context of red evening Emily lipsticks. Don't have that, but a pretty close bright orange red is Tom Ford's lip colour in Wild Ginger, one of his famous fiery shades, fun if you enjoy warmer reds, and a nice creamy substitute if you prefer satins over mattes. The ultimate French accessory is a good red lipstick, according to Aurélie, and one of her favourites is La Bouche Rouge, so perhaps the brand made its way into her set kit too. This luxurious line of refillable red lipsticks is available at La Samaritaine in Paris, the grand restored department store used in a scene in season two. This is Nude Red, a muted brownie shade. A couple of lip balm and glossy picks. Good old Burt's Bees beeswax lip balm appeared in Lily's Vogue Beauty Secrets video and as one of her five favourite things for Birdie. She says it's really hydrating and she loves the tingly feeling from the peppermint, so she's putting it on all day. She also added a bit of lip balm before she starts her makeup process, which I do too. Back in 2016, Lily said she loved Smith's Rosebud Salve and was constantly reapplying it. This is a softly scented rose balm you might remember from my Taylor Swift makeup bag video. It has a smooth, slightly sticky texture, so it almost crosses over into gloss territory with a soft pink tint. Lancome Juicy Tubes. Who had one of these back in the day? Another of Lily's five favourites. She said it was one of the first products she ever bought when she was young. What I would give to get my old Pesh Peach or Cerise Cherry Juicy Tubes back. I can still smell and taste them. I bought Tickled Pink when they returned in 2020, but it's separated and gone a bit funny. I'd love to hear your favourite shades and memories attached to these tubes. A small skincare lineup of Lily approved products. Lancome Advanced Genifique is a serum she's talked about a lot. It appeared in her Vogue video and she says a couple of drops gives her skin such a healthy glow. This famous bottle has hyaluronic acid, vitamin C and ceramides, so it's designed to hydrate, smooth and boost radiance. Still early days of me using this, I swap between too many serums, but I like the really light silky texture. Embryolis Le Creme Concentré is a product I'm much more familiar with, a French pharmacy staple and something Emily in Paris makeup artist Aurélie Payan keeps in her kit, so maybe it made its way onto Lily's skin too. A light moisturiser that makes your face feel and look hydrated, a great healthy fresh glow and makeup sits so nicely on top. Lily is a rose water mist fan, me too. She used a herbivore spray with Vogue and also mentioned Glossier Soothing Face Mist a while ago. She said she sprays this any time of day and it just wakes her up. After they reformulated and repackaged this a while ago, something about it tickles the back of my nose too much, so I prefer Jolique and Heritage Store's Rose Water Mists. 
love this one too. Way back in 2012 at the Vanity Fair Oscar party, Lily's skin was prepped with Caudalie Beauty Elixir by makeup artist Kayleen McAdams, who you might remember from my Sadie Sink makeup bag video. This is another French pharmacy favourite that's a bit fancier and smells like a spa with peppermint, rosemary and rose. Lily's Hand Cream, Waleda Skin Food, another regular in this series in Alexa Chung, Gemma Chan and Kate Bosworth's episodes. I find the original ultra rich cream Lily uses a bit too thick to apply all over my hands, but it's great to massage into cuticles or on dry skin, or I'll mix some in with a lighter hand cream texture. Two different types of hairsprays happening here. Lily said she loves Dry Bars Detox Clear Dry Shampoo Formula. She flipped her hair forward then back in her Vogue video, lifted up small sections and lightly sprayed this underneath to add a bit of texture and volume. I have a mini of the regular dry shampoo from a dry bar visit to freshen up between washes. Then in a colourful birdie shoot in late 2020, Lily's longtime hairstylist Gregory Russell was working his magic and this Hair by Sam McKnight Cool Girl Barely There Texturising Mist was listed as a product that's always in his kit. Sam McKnight is an iconic British hairstylist who's worked with Lily as well and this spray from his line is a nice light way to add texture. Nail polish to finish. In 2017, Lily said her nails must be Essie time for me time. A resort 2015 shade, sadly, but it was a light milky pink with an iridescent pearly finish. I don't usually wear pearly polishes, but Essie Ballet Slippers is a famous pale sheer pink. If you want a bit more of a boost, Essie Mademoiselle is another lovely sheer pastel, or one of my favorites in their long lasting formula is Essie Gel Couture in Fairy Tailor. That's a wrap on this Lily Collins meets Emily Cooper episode. I hope you enjoyed learning about some of the products Lily's worn over the years. I had so much fun researching this and it's so satisfying to finally have enough info to share with you. Did you spot any products in common with her or did any colors catch your eye? Please let me know some of your favorite Lily makeup moments in the comments too. I always love her darker lipstick looks, but she wears every color so well. Lots of other stars lined up to film this year. Thanks for watching. See you next time.